Many plant families have a distinctive floral blueprint which is recognisably their own. It's found in most or all members of the family. Uh, it's recognisable uh, wherever in the world that they're growing. Now one of the drawbacks with this from our human point of view is that it can be difficult to distinguish between uh, different closely related species. And this is particularly important in the carrot family the umbelliferae, because in addition to the many plants which are used as food, uh, there are many plants which are not only very dangerous, but in some cases uh, deadly poisonous. Hemlock would be the outstanding example. Uh, the most poisonous umbellifers in our country would be uh, the water dropworts which are found uh, almost exclusively in wet places. But hemlock is more dangerous in the sense that it is relatively common and widespread. Uh, it grows in waste places, uh, quarries, uh, roadsides, um, uh, hedgerows such as this one here which is in the, on the edge of a silage field, even on occasion uh, uh, on the edges of, of, of playgrounds. Uh, and it is so distinctive an umbellifer. It has all the marks the, uh, of, of a typical umbellifer. Um, but what really makes it stand out, what enables us to distinguish it reliably from other umbellifers, uh, is the stem. It has, it has smooth, not, not hairy, smooth hollow stems which towards the base are either purple or splotched with purple. You can see the speckles here. Not so obvious on some some individuals, uh, but if you look, if we move across here, for example, you'll see uh, you'll see this one here. The base of the stem is is almost uh, completely purple. So it's most important to be aware that this is the one feature that that, that makes hemlock stand out from the other umbellifers. Uh, if we look at the plant itself, you see it's uh, usually very tall. Here it's extremely tall, uh, and with inflorescences which are so typically uh, carrot family uh, inflorescence is that if you're looking just at the inflorescence itself it can be difficult to, to say what exact species it is that you're actu actually looking at. Um, the flowers, the individual flowers are smaller than they are in hogweed which we uh, are taking as our type species, our representative species where the flowers are bigger and easier to see what's going on. Uh, but in fact even though the small, the, the, the flowers are smaller here uh, hemlock is a very good example of the elegant protandry that characterizes so many me members of the family. Uh, protandry. Uh, protandry is the condition where the male parts of the flower mature before the female. It is a device uh, to prevent self-pollination, to maximize the opportunities for cross-pollination. Um, now if we look at the at the flowers here, you see they're very small, so it's difficult to see uh, a great deal more uh, at this stage. But if you, if you look very closely, if you observe an individual flower over a number of days, you will see something quite extraordinary, and that is that the five stamens, you can see the parts of the flower, they're all in fives, uh, the five stamens mature successively, in other words, one after the other. Uh, so the first stamen rises and extends until it is over the stigma and then it sheds its pollen and only when it's shed its pollen does it fall back down and its place is taken by the second stamen and so on until all five have shed their pollen and only then does the stigma become receptive. It, it enlarges by about a millimetre, becomes very prominent uh, and then it is receptive to pollen that's arriving, uh, presumably from uh, other plants as well as from the umbel itself. If you look at the if you look at the flowers in profile, this is something it's much easier to see. If you look at the flowers, you can see that above each individual tiny flower, you see there's just a single stamen. Now, apart from the dangers. Uh, of ingesting parts of the plant and all of the plant is extremely poisonous. Uh, um, the most famous example of poisoning by hemlock in fact is the execution of the great Greek philosopher Socrates 
in the 5th century BC. In, uh, in Athens in the 5th century BC, this was the official method of execution, the administration of hemlock. But apart from that, uh, there are uh, significant harmful effects from handling the plant, which explains the gloves. Uh, from handling the plant and also from breathing in dust or pollen from a stand such as this. Um, although it's less of a, a possibility, I suppose, in our day, uh, in an earlier generation when uh, children were more inclined to play with natural objects around them, uh, a, a favourite toy of boys particularly being pea shooters, uh, the dead stems of hemlock might have seemed the ideal for a pea shooter. 